Welcome back. You're now watching the second video in my series on functions. So our first function, really all it did was we used a function to generate a string and that string was hello world. We are going to pick up where we left off and on this form we're going to have a text box and that text box is going to be a place where a user is going to enter their name. So I'm going to name my text box text name. I don't need to worry about the text. I like to use a label to display what should be going on in my text box. So the text of my label is going to be something to the effect of enter name. You notice I didn't name the label because I'm probably not going to be referencing the label again. You could, but I don't. So this form, in theory at least, tells the user what to do. So now I'm going to jump on over to code view and we're going to look at where we left off last time. So in my last video we created a function with no parameters, right? So we didn't pass it any parameters and it returned a static string. It just said hello world every time. Pretty roundabout way of writing a hello world program, but it allowed us to illustrate some concepts. This program is going to demonstrate the concept of passing variables to a function. So, if you remember, we added a text box. So, if we've got a text box, we're going to need to get the value out of the text box. So, I'm going to create a variable called name of type string. And I'm going to do this over two lines. I could do it on the fly, but I'm not going to. So, I'm going to say name equals text name dot text. Notice that I don't need to do any data conversions because this is a string and that's a string. So all I've done is I've picked that value off the form. So what I want to do now is I need, I've got this variable called name and it's set to whatever happened in that form, whatever the user entered. So if they entered a bill, it's bill. If they entered can, it's can. But what I need to do is I need to get this variable down to here. So one way I could do that, um, not what I'm going to do, I could just reference the form directly down here, but then we wouldn't be illustrating the concept. So I've got this variable right here, and I need to pass it down there. So I'm calling hello world at this point, and I want to pass it name. All right, I do that, that's a problem. Um, it's a problem because I just called a function called hello world, and I passed it a string, right, because this is a string. Uh, and if you look at my hello world function, my hello world function takes nothing. So I need to write a hello world function that takes a string. And so what I need to do is I need to define a parameter. I could define any number of parameters. I'm just going to have one. And so the first thing I'm going to write here is whatever I want to call that variable. Notice up here it's called name. Down here I called it NME. And I have to give it a type like string. So I'm saying that I expect to be passed a string. Now this is just the temporary name of that value. I could call it whatever I wanted. Um, and you'll also notice this keyword by val just popped up. I don't want to talk about that right now. I will talk about that several videos down the line. There's another option and that's by ref. Um, you don't need to worry about that. Notice that I didn't even put that in there. It populated by itself. So we will talk about that later, but for now we don't need to worry about that. What we do need to worry about is I created um, a parameter called NME and a type of string. And so notice that this error went away because this says, hey, look for a function called hello world that takes a string. And here's a function called hello world that takes a string. And so now what I need to do, here's the easy part is I've got this variable here called message and instead of hello world I want to say hello and then whatever that value that was passed in this case these things agree right so whatever I pass it I'm now calling it NME so I say hello concatenate NME and it's gonna return a message that does what I would think it would do and this program should function as I'm hoping, let's run it and just make sure. So if I say my name is Ken and I press hello, it says hello Ken. And I do hello Bill. Hello Bill. And so let's just look at the code a, a bit more. So just from top to bottom, here's where I did clear, here's where I created my variable for the message. Here's where I created a variable that stores the name. Here is where I reference the form and set the variable name to whatever you entered. And right here is where I set the variable message to whatever is returned by that function. Remember this function returns a string, which is defined right there. I passed it name, 
And so what happens at this point in my program is it jumps down to here, finds a function called hello world that takes a string, and I generated my string. This isn't interesting by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, at least it shows the idea of passing a variable from one section of the code to another. I'm going to do three more videos on the subject, and they're going to be a little more interesting. Um, but I feel like we have to start somewhere, and this is a pretty good starting point. Yeah, so it might be a good idea to keep on watching for my next three videos. Thanks for tuning in.